Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Meeting of the Minds webinar, Building the Human Capital for Sustainable Cities, Filling the Talent Pipeline for Smart Urban Systems. My name is Jesse feller Hahn, and I'm the Executive Director of Meeting of the Minds. Meeting of the Minds is a global thought leadership platform with year-round programming. Our mission is to connect global urban sustainability, innovation, and technology leaders across sectors to share best practices, tools, and solutions through our blog, cityminded.org, our monthly webinars, pop-up events, and our annual summit. This year, our annual summit, Meeting of the Minds 2016, convenes in the San Francisco Bay Area in late October. A few housekeeping notes to begin. As you enter the WebEx console, you either joined us by audio broadcast or by phone, which was automatically muted. Because of our very large audience in attendance today, you will remain muted throughout the event. We will have a Q&A during the second half of the hour. When you have a question, please enter them in the WebEx Q&A panel as you think of them. You can find that Q&A panel in the bottom right-hand corner of the console. Please leave the WebEx chat window, which is in the middle console, for communication to our WebEx facilitators for any problems or issues you might be experiencing. Again, please enter your questions for our speaker in the Q&A panel. Um, the recording of, of this um, webinar and the slides will be available on the event page at cityminded.org. Um, that link is already available in the chat window in the middle console if you want to check that out. We would appreciate your input regarding today's webinar, so a short survey will pop up when you close your browser at the end of the event. Today's presenter is Jean Bellevue Dunn, Chief Knowledge Officer for Cisco Systems and President and Chairman of the IoT Talent Consortium. Jean is a recognized thought leader on the workforce of the future and an expert in workforce education, the social enterprise, and knowledge system. So with that, Jean, take it away. Thank you so much, and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, hopefully you can hear me well. Um, I'm going to today talk about a couple of things. One first, um, what the characteristics are of, of smart cities are in sustainable cities and some of the major trends. And then I'm going to go into uh, the impact of talent and uh, the people within the cities and what we need to do to make sure that we are well set up to drive next generation solutions that will help um, our, our cities be uh, more sustainable, more innovative, drive better overall prosperity and better experiences for its citizens. So, you know, let's first start with um, understanding, you know, that cities um, are the heart and soul of not just um, our nation and economy, but those around the world. And they are uh, essentially becoming the, the um, you know, the area where we can bring together community at a, at a more um, uh, accelerated rate than we can any other place within our community. We, you know, if we, as we look at how people think about um, cities different than um, rural areas, um, you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of um, changes that are going on in the world that are really driving people towards urbanization and towards uh, moving to cities to live and work. And, you know, let's start with a few key, key stats here. Um, you know, we are seeing uh, major changes in social demographics across the globe. And, and if you think about, um, you know, what's happened over the last five years in terms of population growth and, and uh, some populations that, quite frankly, are aging, um, you, you'll see that this dra dramatically impacts, um, you know, both the nation and the local economies. And, of course, uh, in the United States, uh, North America, um, what we see is that, you know, while we've experienced a, a good population growth over the last uh, several years due to um, Gen X and Gen, Gen Y coming into, um, coming into their um, employment uh, time frames and, and um, you know, them becoming adults and, um, you know, carrying things forward, uh, one of the things, of course, that we understand is that, um, you know, sometimes the, these new populations make choices to marry later and uh, have children later or not have children at all. In fact, we're seeing a growing change across all developed countries for um, people having getting married later, getting married less, uh, and uh, in having less children. So, so we're going to all be um, faced with the same thing. All developed countries will be faced with the same thing. We're going to have to one, make sure that we can 
um, not only deal with urbanization within cities as, as populations start to go into the cities for work and, and even during retirement to get access to um, all the great city services that are available, but we're also going to need to figure out ways to bring in new populations of people from um, the more emerging areas um, as we continue to um, take in populations from outside of our countries and local areas. The other, the other major thing um, that we see is that as, um, as cities uh, begin to grow at an exponential rate, and I'll show you some, some statistics in a moment, um, it's creating huge um, uh, challenges for cities in their ability to scale to this, this new phenomenon. But the good news is that um, digitization and digital transformation is actually bringing us new ways of connecting people up, providing services, and enhancing the overall experience of being in cities um, at a rate never before. And we'll explain why that is in a few moments. Now, if you look at um, what's happening around the globe, um, and this is, you know, this is true of every major um, city everywhere, is we're seeing huge, huge urbanization, people moving to these cities at a rate of 10,000 people per hour. Essentially what that means is that we're, we're creating um, you know, movement into these cities the size of London or New York every month. And now that's a, that's a tremendous phenomenon if you, if you think about it. And of course there's, there's brown cities and, which are you know, cities that have been around forever like New York and San Francisco and London and Boston. And then there are the um, new cities you know, whether they be Dubai, which is, you know, only 50-year-old city and, you know, essentially grew up in the digital age, grew up in the Internet age, um, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing different challenges with each one of those. And, uh, of course, as, as we think that most of the cities that are out there today aren't new, they're, they've been around for a long time, we have to figure out new ways to um, provide solutions to these cities so that they can, in fact, deal with the challenges ahead. And we'll, we'll share that with you in a moment. So, so what are the challenges? Well, cities see a lot of uh, interesting challenges as more people migrate to them. Of course, first with you know, increasing crowds, uh, there comes increased crime. There comes um, challenges on the infrastructure itself. Uh, if you if you talk to people who um, have to go in and out of the city a lot, they'll tell you you know what drives them crazy. Of course, is the traffic congestion, the lack of good uh, public transit, good city services, the inability to find parking and be able to get from one place to the other in an efficient manner, and of course um, you know just being able to um, if you're living in the city, just being able to um, get access to the kind of services you would expect to have, whether that be education, healthcare or just general city services like transportation um, and, uh, you know, things that make the city safe, pleasant, clean, um, you know, those are the things that matter when you, when you live in a city. And of course, the biggest reason why people migrate to cities is because of the jobs. Um, that's where all the new jobs are being created. Um, that's if you think about you know what's happening in San Francisco. San Francisco is seeing a huge explosion as a result of a lot of new job creation. And it's not just startups that are doing this, uh, you know, creating these new jobs. It's really actually the the companies that are past startup phase that are going into their next phase of um, high growth and development. So they've they've sort of you know turned the corner on. Um, first level of profitability and proving out the concept, and now they're growing like crazy. And this is this is what um, cities think about when they think about their 10, 20 year planning: is how do they attract the kind of companies and the kind of populations they want into the city, uh, so that they can, in fact, um, have the kind of um, revenue sources that allow them to deal with all of these other challenges that they need to set up infrastructure for. So, um, so let's talk about some of these um, some of these uh, challenges and and specifically where they sit. Of course, um, you know we talked about some of this before, whether it be parking or traffic management. Uh, everyone has heard this before, I'm sure. But uh, you know, if you if you think about um, how much time you spend, if you are coming into a city from um, from outside, and you are coming in to do business in a city, uh, the amount of time that you spend trying to find parking, trying to get through traffic. Uh, you know, and, and making sure that wherever you are, you're safe. You know, that there, there's a lot of time spent on those, those things. Uh, and, uh, in fact, uh, in the city of Paris, I mean, it's estimated that people spend 40 years of their lives 
looking for parking in the city. So, so new types of services through digitization have been created to actually um, drive a new experience when people come into the cities. Because of course, you know, um, everyone, uh, everyone that is in um, city planning and city management knows and understands that the more they can make their cities robust, the more they can drive commerce through their cities, the more they can make their businesses successful that come to their cities and provide a vibrant environment for that and get rid of all of the reasons why people don't want to come to the city, then um, the more prosperous um, you know, and the more uh, um, services they can provide um, into the city, which makes it even better. So best-in-class cities really think about these things. And, and there are all kinds of new um, applications. I'll give you an example, um, both in San Francisco, Barcelona, um, Boston, and many other cities. You know, they have um, bridged together different parts of these previous siloed areas, such as traffic management and parking, and put together through um, the work with um, uh, corporations, technology corporations, uh, new applications that allow citizens to um, log into the city app, find out where you know where they're going, map out where they're going, find out the latest and greatest um, uh, or the best parking situation uh, for them. They can reserve their parking in advance, so they don't have to spend hours driving around looking for parking. They can reserve that exact time and space for them, so they know it's going to be available. Um, and they can get all the reports on traffic management and how what's the best way to get into the city, whether it's you know driving, whether it's uh, you know taking a specific uh, line, and once you're in the city, how to get from one place to another very efficiently. So these are the kind of things we start to you know bring together um, these different um, assets, not just within the city itself and city services, but with um, organizations, um, whether it be startups or, or um, technology organizations, they can help them actually provide these new kinds of solutions. Same thing with waste management, right? The way to keep a city clean and also to prevent traffic is to make sure that you know where you need to be to pick up the waste um, as, as the waste cans get filled. This is what Barcelona did that helped to clean up their city dramatically. Is there, they put sensors on all of their different uh, dumpsters and trash cans so they knew where to go and where not to go to make sure their city, city stayed clean. Likewise, you know, trying to manage through ports and which is a major uh, part of commerce for um, most cities, you know, being able to manage that more electronically through intelligent systems and mapping and, and uh, doing a better job of, um, you know, uh, port control uh, for safety, security, and um, expediency. Those are the kind of things that are really top-notch areas where both government and private sector alike have invested to create next generation of city services. And of course, we haven't even touched on education and healthcare yet. So there are huge issues out there, huge global social economic problems to solve. The good news is we're in a better place through digital technology than ever before to be able to solve them because um, not only are we ready with technology, but the market is ready, the consumers are ready. In fact, they're demanding. They're demanding new kinds of services um, you know, through their mobile apps, through um, you know, quick access through their tablets to be able to get these kinds of services. And so they have more information at their fingertips to make better decisions as they participate in anything to do with their local community and services. And of course, this changes everything about the future of work. That means that every single sector has to get technology fluent, it has to get digitally fluent, it has to think about how it's going to use digital transformation as a way to drive uh, long-term prosperity. Um, so this is not just a city problem, this is um, also a private sector problem as well. And of course, um, corporations, this is their number one agenda, is to innovate and digitize their business models so they can in fact commingle with their community in a better way to serve the customer better. Now that changes the way that we all work, you know. And if you think about this, um, if you think about every industry being transformed, every city and public sector uh, part of the government uh, changing and, and trying to come up with new ways to do things better and more efficiently to solve some of these problems, then the big thing, the big question ahead is, what do we do to get the talent ready to do this? We need new types of skills new types of talent to make this happen. And of course, um, if, you, if you also think about the agenda of a city, the agenda of a city is to attract the best companies and the best talent to a city. Because what makes a city great is its people. 
It's not just its services, but its people and what the people are able to do. So innovation, um, the ability to drive new, new businesses, to, to be able to drive new ways of bridging together both um, public and private sectors to create new solutions. This is all part of ma the master plan for generating new smart cities. And of course, to do that, you have to have some basic infrastructure services, just like anything else. When you think about roads in a city, uh, you know, roads uh, are equivalent to infrastructure that you have to build in technology. You can't have a digital city unless you've built out the infrastructure first. So these are the things that are top of mind uh, for all city planners and for industry alike. Now, you think about the types of services, um, you know, that you need to offer in order for people to have a better life within the city and urban environment itself. Well, of course, they need the great public services that we just talked about, better transportation and all that, but you need, um, you need health care, you need education that can scale to the mass of urbanization, um, you need retail to um, not just be a physical thing within a store, but to be something that is actually virtualized and offered throughout the city. And I'll give an example of that in a moment. You also need to, of course, have um, sustainable energy and energy that is distributed and populated where it needs to be as it needs to be. Um, so again, digitization becomes the, the way of getting there differently than we have before and allows us to develop you know, high quality um, public and private sector services um, and be able to make sure that cities can in fact flourish, um, but also be sustainable in the process. We have to be very thoughtful about you know, um, this. And you know, cities by definition are um, a place where you can get more efficiency because you're putting more people in smaller spaces by definition. You're, you're um, putting them in better proximity to where they need to be to go to work. And in fact, you know, um, there's a huge trend on work uh, environments where you can um, work from home. That is something that is becoming now you know, paramount to every um, workplace agenda. And, uh, and that is also creating a level of sustainability for both cities and uh, urban, um, suburban areas so that we can, in fact, allow people to work from wherever they want to work um, uh, and be able to contribute um, in a collaborative manner. So we have huge opportunities ahead. And there are new business models, new tools that allow us to get there. And if you think about um, what the Internet of Things is all about, it's, uh, and the Internet of Everything, um, we call it the digitization of business and private, uh, private public sector, uh, you will see that there's really four core tenets of this. Of course, the people itself, right? People have to be in the middle of um, understanding how to create new solutions that leverage new and different types of processes make things, to make things more efficient, and of course utilize data to automate transactional decisions as well as thoughtful, proactive type of decisions. And of course they do all of that by connecting the people, process, data, and things together. So there's magic that happens when you're able to do this and you bring technology into the mix of making really, really good uh, business decisions and policy decisions. So if you think about this in the in this context of a smart city environment, of course, this is about connecting city, uh, city services, citizen services, uh, and business services together through rich infrastructure. And this is a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity for businesses. It's a huge opportunity for public sector. Um, we've estimated through all the research and reports we've done, it's a $19 trillion opportunity. That's <laughs> Never hard to get your arms around, to be frank, but um, we know that it is both um, an opportunity for efficiency and an opportunity, a great, great opportunity for growth and prosperity as well. So who's going to build all this? That's the greatest question of all. We talked about the fact that cities and smart cities, really, it's, it's all about the people. It's all about attracting the right people and attracting the right kinds of businesses and the right kind of momentum to the city. But who's going to build it? Well, of course, we need to take existing talent and help them transform. We also need to bring new talent in and um, bring them in from colleges and help them to um, position better for the next jobs of the future. 
Because in every single one of these segments that we've just talked about, in every one of these solutions, um, it takes a new type of talent. Think about what Burberry had to think about when it started to um, create a solution that allowed them to work with the city of New York and work with the city of London and create a Burberry environment anywhere they wanted to in those cities with electronic billboards and mobile apps that allowed people to look at images, get, get excited about what they saw, and then at a click of a button transact and, and, and buy what they wanted to buy by just scanning the image of that electronic billboard or that, that poster in the, in the train station or um, you know, even um, you know, things that were displayed in magazines, connecting all the dots between this and bringing in things from the city like um, you know, electronic advertisement really starts to, you start to see how these new kinds of solutions are going to create you know, a new need for talent that is very, very multidisciplinary. And that means that we have to do something different to be able to scale to this because we know that talent is falling well behind um, the agenda on digitization, and we need to do something about this, and we need to do it quickly. So when we think about this uh, challenge of talent and the fact that 90% of jobs will change in industries and public sector to be able to create these new solutions, um, we've got to figure out how to um, scale that at in a massive way. We have to think about how do we create disciplines around safety and security that bring in things like video surveillance and, um, and proactive intelligent data that helps to detect things before they happen. How do we create the new kind of educational environment that provides information knowledge in a moment of need every day within the workplace, not just in an educational institution? How do we create health services that are um, it can reach everyone um, into their homes, not just, and, and as they're walking around the city every day, right, how do they provide information and data and, and get proactive health care services that, that meet their time of need and their moment of need? You know, how do we build sustainable buildings and water systems so that you only are using um, lighting and, and water when you need to, right? And of course, transportation, making sure transportation and utilities are there when you need them and not there when you don't. So those are the, those are the kinds of applications that we are going to need to bring technology into the picture to solve. And of course, that means that, you know, most jobs will have a high degree of technology component as part of solving that solution. So there's a whole bunch of new job roles that are coming, um, uh, you know, out there as a result of this. And, you know, to, just, to, just to give you a feel for how fast this is moving, um, I have, this is a slide that I, I did uh, about two years ago, and I must have changed the slide about 20 times uh, in terms of adding new job roles, new areas that are coming to be as we think about the jobs of the future and how technology is uh, becoming such a huge part of our lives and the way that we work every day. Um, if you think about marketeers, right, the new way to marketing is through being a professional triber by bringing communities together in new and different ways than they've ever done before, social media and so forth. People that are urban innovators, these are the entrepreneurs and the mechanics, urban mechanics of how do you um, transform a city, a brown city, an existing city? How do you create some new pilots and some new innovation solutions and bring them to market, right, and combine uh, the best of what both public and private sector can do together. Um, if to do any of that, of course, um, and to think about, you know, how to do things better, you need data, data scientists who are going to help with um, analyzing and looking at data in new and different ways and pulling data from all these things that are connected now, these billion, 50 billion things that will be connected in the future. Um, and driving contextual information and insight from that so you can make new kinds of decisions which help you transform. And of course you need developers, platform developers, that can pull all these applications together um, and put them into this, more, this context of an entire um, solution that breaks through new boundaries of, of uh, connecting things together that have never been connected before. Um, you'll, need, uh, you'll need to do all of this, of course, um, including 
you know, when you think about energy and smart energy and transportation systems, you'll want to make sure that everything you do is safe and secure. And so bringing in um, cybersecurity and security analysts into the picture are top of mind for everyone, both in public and private sector, because you don't want to engage in any of this unless you have built out a good uh, set of policies, procedures, um, and technologies that will assist you in making sure that you can keep everyone safe and make people even safer through the digitization of all these different applications working together. You know, we'll see new types of things popping up in virtual reality in the future. Education will be done differently that way. Um, you'll see uh, machine learning be become a core part of how we learn and work and interact every day and, and how we get information served up to us so we can serve our customers, our partners, and uh, the public better. So, um, you know, just a tremendous amount of change and new types of jobs that are coming about is, as a result of this change, and that's going to require a different approach to education, a different way of thinking about our talent, um, both in cities and within companies and within the uh, public sector itself. And of course, um, we can't forget that not only are these specialized skills going to be very important, but new types of skills in collaboration, communication, uh, entrepreneurship, the ability to think through problems that have never been done before, think about the, the global or local implications of decisions that you make, uh, making sure that you understand the aspects of diversity of the workplace um, and be able to respond to that properly. Uh, being able to plan thoughtfully through all of this digital disruption, disruption and be able to make calculated risks, um, relying on all the right sort resources that are available to you in your communities and being able to bridge those communities together in new and different ways. And of course, the ITC uh, proficiency that we just talked about. Um, so there's huge, huge new skills that need to be built, and, and it's not just the job of educational systems to do this. It is the job, quite frankly, of every organization across the globe. So in building this new um, knowledge economy, we've thought about this quite a bit um, with the IoT Talent Consortium. Um, we thought about how, how is the workforce of the future shaping up? How do we bring um, education to people who are both in schools and outside of schools and are looking to figure out what are the jobs of the future? How do I prepare for that? What's the roadmap to get there? Um, what are the resources and tools that I need to get there, and how do I know um, where the jobs are? So we decided to um, bring together uh, a coalition of uh, people to, that, that really thinks about talent as the center of these cities and the center of um, how we think about digital disruption of the future. Because without the right talent, without helping the talent transform to be able to do these kinds of things, we will never get there. And it's going to take, a, it's going to take everyone to be part of this to make this work. Um, it's, we, we say it will take a village. It will take more than a village. It will take, it will take <laughs> villages working together to create new types of communities. And of course, for us in the IoT Talent Consortium, we are, what we're trying to create is a new, smarter approach to developing the workforce um, in the work that they do every day and helping them across the entire journey of lifelong um, learning. And of course, it's, it's, it's really paramount for us to do this because honestly, I believe that the, the country or the city or the, the locations that get this right will be the ones that can excel the most. And if you look at the most recent studies from uh, CEOs and heads of state of public sector, they'll tell you that innovation is top of mind to them, but talent is even more top of mind. Why? Because you don't get to innovation without a talented workforce that understands how to do some of these things. And of course, since we're going into so many new areas that are so diverse, we need to be able to create those um, those job roles and those standards and uh, be able to create the environments that people can go to to learn about these things and to move their personal careers forward into these new exciting fields that are going to develop as a result of smart cities and digital disruption. So the mission of the IoT Talent Consortium, which I lead, is to essentially 
look at all the challenges of IoT and what its demands are for talent, line those up with the kinds of skills that are going to be needed to get there, work on standardizing those skills with key um, institutional um, organizations who in fact will be the hiring people that will hire these kinds of people into these types of jobs and bring this all together through um, a very robust um, set of infrastructure, tools, content, um, and ecosystem that will allow the connectivity between schools, education, private sector, public sector, and of course all the um, change agents and um, uh, educators out there that are not necessarily sitting in the educational system that can help us to move this agenda forward and most importantly provide the visibility and the roadmaps to the individual learners so they can define their own journey, define the next steps for where they want to go in having an exciting future in this whole idea of digital disruption. And of course, um, you know, to be able to connect the dots and um, provide um, a vehicle for people to um, know not just what to do, but where the jobs are on top of that, and to have people who are willing to, to create standards with us, the talent consortium, on what these jobs look like means that there won't be this disconnect that there exists today between jobs and talent. We have many people in the world. We have plenty of people in the world to get these things done. The problem is they're not skilled in the right things to be able to make the difference, to be able to make these leaps. And so our job is to make sure that they are, to make sure that we are bringing them forward and connecting them to the workforce companies that will hire this kind of talent um, that is desperately in need of this kind of talent today and in the future. And this is just a sample of some of the companies that are on our board that are helping us to figure this out. Uh, of course, we wanted to make sure we had educators. We have actually city government as well. We're, um, uh, you know, on the board. Um, the city of Chicago, the CIO for the city of Chicago has been engaged with us here. And we just got to stood up the, the IoT Talent Consortium over the last couple of months. So we're just getting going. We're really a startup of ourselves. But I will tell you that um, having done this before, you know, having looked at an industry like the Internet before uh, in my role here in driving knowledge and learning for the networking industry, we had the same challenge. You know, when we started the Internet generation 20, more than 25 years ago, we started with this base concept that if we were going to build out the Internet, we needed to have talent for the Internet. And so we started a very pragmatic but very exhaustive and high scalable approach to developing that. We, ha we developed over 3 million people um, in the internet community that are now here to serve all kinds of different needs of our customers, our partners, public sector alike across the globe. And that can only be done through a long-term plan, a set of aligned resources, and an agenda that drives for aggressive goals to change the paradigm of learning and connect the dots where they need to be connected to make it happen. And of course, as you can expect, all of this will be done digitally over, over digital platforms so that we can reach everybody everywhere from where they are um, and not leave anyone behind. And our goal is to have um, over a million new learners in this franchise. Uh, that will be equipped to solve the problems of tomorrow with IoT, um, both within cities and private sector alike. And, uh, you know, it's a long-term goal, of course, but we believe we can do this. We've done this before. We believe we can do this with um, all of your help. And we are actively looking for participation in the IoT uh, Talent Consortium, both at a learner level, of course, but uh, also to create the standards that we need to get there. And, um, you know, one of the things when we were first started out with the IoT Talent Consortium, the thing we realized is the first thing we had to do was get the major employers engaged to set the standards. Because if we could have employers say, this is what I want to, this is my business problem, this is what I'm trying to solve for, these are the kind of people I want to hire, and these are the standards for which we hire too. By doing that and then aligning all the educational programs that we have underneath that, we are in fact, you know, creating a completely aligned agenda 
between what's needed in talent uh, of the future and what's being asked for of the jobs of today and providing programs that help people skill up along that aligned agenda. So, um, so the workforce companies um, are growing rapidly as we speak. We have lots of uh, new organizations joining us, both on private and public sector. And we encourage you to take a look at our site uh, at the IOTtalent.org uh, and uh, check it out. See if it's something that's of interest to you. And if you want to join, please join us. We're going to need we're going to need everyone engaged in this in order to um, make a difference and really make this dream happen. Um, but I'm confident with the players that we have engaged today, as well as the people that we plan on um, having participate tomorrow, that we will make this. Um, Scale. We will make this uh, a solution for talent that goes beyond, um, you know, any single what any single company or organization can do by bridging the gaps between um, all of these different ecosystems and communities, and and standardizing on the approach for how we align the talent to the right skills at the right place at the right time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jean. Fantastic stuff. Um, so we're going to go into a Q and A with Jean. Um, right now with all of you on our webinar. So you can enter your questions in the bottom right console, the Q&A console, and type those in, and I will be um, moderating Q&A with, with Jean right now. Also, I wanted to just mention one more time that the w slides and the recording of this webinar um, will be available on our website. It's now available on our home page, on the first, I first image on our home page. Um, and the slides are already up there, so we will be adding the recording um, tomorrow. So now we will go into our Q&A. So question, we've already received a bunch of questions, Jean. One question is, and you, you've touched on this with um, IOTtalent.org, but David Capelli wants to know how he can join the IOT Talent Consortium. Is there a, a space on the website to, to contact yes. you, or what's the process? Yes, the process is uh, go on to the website. There's a um, there's a variety of ways in which you can join. You can join as a sponsor. You can join as a learner. And the site itself will walk you through the, um, the various different choices, depending upon how you want to participate in this, whether you want to participate as uh, someone to help us create this or to uh, participate in it and uh, get served by it. Great. So, Perfect. yeah, if they just go to the site, it's very clear on all the different mechanisms to get in. Perfect, perfect. Um, so we have a, a few questions that actually are pretty aligned. Um, Leva Delmas asks, um, what are the basic digital resources a city needs to be attractive for talent? Um, another way, another question from Frank Westering, which is on the same ones, what do you think is the biggest single factor attracting talent to a city? Oh, great questions. And um, I touched on it a little bit, but let me dive in a little bit more. And I'll, I'll use an example of um, Barcelona because they did a fabulous job, as, as most city planners try to do when they have a vision for digitizing the city. And, you know, it starts with, like everything else, is understanding your citizens, understanding the makeup of your, your city and what's driving, um, uh, you know, a variety of things, including things like tourism, you know, people coming to the city to work, to learn, to live. Um, and what uh, Barcelona did was they essentially um, spent about six months uh, observing um, and, um, if you will, getting, getting data on what was driving people away from their city. They, they had noticed that, you know, um, it had had a good amount of uh, people coming into the city, living the city, prospering the city, and then, of course, it had a big downturn um, and there were a lot of jobs lost, and um, you know, and the city itself started to fray at the edges. It, it had issues like, you know, um, it wasn't clean. It didn't feel safe to people. Um, the transportation systems weren't working right. Um, there were no utilities or services for citizens, um, you know, outside of old-fashioned ways of getting things done. And so, um, so what the mayor essentially did was said, okay, I'm going to focus on the things that matter to people. I'm going to focus on the things that make a difference to um, how people how people experience a city. And, you know, that's really the trick of it is understanding what changes the experience. And so what changes the experience is, of course, 
having di digital technologies that help you navigate your way through the city, navigate your way through uh, public transportation, um, and connect those systems up in a way that makes that more efficient. You know, why would you want buses stopping at bus stops uh, when there's nobody there to, to get on the bus? Why would you want, why would you want um, train stations uh, to stop at locations that there aren't people there? Why, you know, that's inefficient. Why would, you, why would you want red lights to come into uh, a street when, uh, you know, when, when you essentially uh, have no traffic, um, you know, uh, coming your way, right? Everything needs to be more intelligent. City services need to be more intelligent. And to do that, connecting them up and having them sense what's going on in that moment, in that local location is critical to be able to provide a more robust, uh, you know, environment. We talked before about, you know, Barcelona cleaning up its city by, uh, you know, by understanding that uh, it was, it was, it was uh, they didn't have enough money um, they didn't have enough money to um, send, you know, trash collectors out everywhere all the time to all the different locations they had because the city was widely dispersed. So they ended up with lots of locations that were dirty, filthy, they became unsafe, uh, and people didn't want to go there anymore. So what they did is they connected up all the, the garbage cans with sensors that allowed uh, people to um, do two things. One, the city... Um, uh, the, the, the vendors that they were using to pick up the garbage were able to see where they needed to be and where they didn't need to be, and so they made less stops. That reduced the cost of offering that service to the city, which the city would, could then turn into other kinds of really robust uh, citizen services, like connecting their transportation systems and giving um, c citizens um, access to um, reservation-based parking services so they didn't have to you know, they didn't have to um, drive all over the city trying to find parking in that particular day. Um, they also created um, uh, video surveillance uh, solutions in, um, in areas and smart lighting solutions in areas where uh, they had high crime rates. And by putting in video and, and putting in um, smart lighting services, uh, they were able to dramatically reduce crime in those particular areas. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of data out there. Police will tell you that, you know, areas that are well lit and that are observed generally don't have crimes. <laughs> so yeah. um, those are the basic kind of services that cities can do that, that aren't tremendously difficult. You can, you can bridge together two or three different things with local technology companies that are willing to help you. Um, to connect the dots on some of these different things and, and improve the environment dramatically. Um, so those, so right. I'd say, you know, education and healthcare is another thing, right? People, people come to cities because they want to get educated, they want healthcare, they want jobs. Jobs is probably the number one reason why people move to a city. Um, they want access to the jobs. And the number one reason why companies select a city to move to is because they believe that they've got enough talent. There's no... There's no surprise that um, cities that have robust educational systems like Boston, San Francisco, many others, right, if you have a lot of educational systems surrounding the city, you attract a lot of great new talent. Um, and that talent is where those companies want to be to be able to hire the best and the brightest to be able to grow their businesses, right? So it's all interconnected, yeah. right? Yeah. Great. Um we have a lot of questions from folks all over the world, Cameroon, Egypt, Sudan, West Africa, Niger, um, and then all the way to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, folks are wondering, one, um, what are there going to be courses and certifications available? Are they going to be online? Are they going to be based in certain cities? I think people are wondering how this talent consortium, um, you know, the actual training will manifest itself and how they can they can get involved in that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and it's a great question. So, um, we will be building, um, you know, as we talked about before, we're going to have these aligned programs to some of the bigger topics in um, IoT digitization. And it will go across both this topic of smart cities, but also, of course, any kind of IoT disruption. So um, with that, we will 
absolutely drive courses and certifications um, across some of the top areas that um, are important. You know, top of mind to us is big data, data science, cybersecurity and security, um, you know, things like uh, industrial automation, um, things like um, collaboration, innovation, those are those are going to be those are going to be technologies and um, ways of working, if you will, that are going to be core to the future of building these new digital places. And um, and you know, so we're going to absolutely drive you know um, five to ten core areas right off the bat. In fact, we're already doing some of that today. It'll be offered all online through a digital platform. Um, uh, collaborative knowledge. We're going to essentially not just provide you a platform to um, engage in the learning, but we're also going to provide you a way to um, connect and communicate with each other because the reality is, is the solutions of the future will not be created by one individual with one set of expertise. It's going to require an entire bench of different types of expertise to make these things happen. And it's also going to require people coming together from different walks of life, different types of enterprises and, and public sector teams to, um, you know, create, if you will, an ecosystem solution to make this occur. So, so by definition of that, we will provide a place not just to learn but to connect um, on this site and to meet people of like minds who are interested in these kinds of topics. And I highly suspect that just by helping people understand these things and driving these topics and driving these um, educational initiatives, not just through us, but through all the players that are that are equally aligned to this uh, in the world, that we're going to drive a very, very robust dialogue and a chance to connect with people in ways that um, they've never had access to before. So we're going to try to, if you will, be the ecosystem of information, communication, and education um, with an underlying group of 2,000 other major players that will serve up um, great resources to do all of the above. Great. Um, so one question, and I think this um, ties into a lot of a lot of the questions coming in of places in, around the world who are not the San Francisco's and New York's and London's, but. For instance, um, one question about Miami. Miami doesn't have any major tech or manufacturing companies anchoring the job market. For instance, this guy's um, bunch of his talents and friends have moved elsewhere for high-paying jobs. Can you discuss how a city can attract companies like Google and Cisco, et cetera? <laughs> yeah, well, um, the, you know, it goes back to the early question before, which is um, large tech companies will go to places that um, have educational systems that have people pouring out of them uh, that are technology savvy. So, so to do that, you have to have an infrastructure of education that is, in fact, feeding this. This is why you know places like you know Boston and California are top of mind to most um, technology companies, and New York's. You know, New, York, New York's beginning to uh, also get that kind of um, vibe about it. Um, and I believe that Miami is starting to understand that because uh, I've seen recent evidence and, and uh, certainly recent discussion around this that, you know, Miami is trying to create uh, tech hubs uh, at, at an aggressive pace. And if you think about it, Miami has got a lot going for it. I know Miami quite well, and and it is uh, you know a digital city by definition. You know, if you if you um, anyone that's been there knows that you know most of the city uh, has had new development over the last uh, you know five to ten years, and it's really come alive. So I think that um, you know the good news is that in terms of city planning, they've done a very good job of making sure that buildings are high tech and that it's an environment where young people want to go and move to. Um, the, the the thing will be to align some of its educational programs locally so that people have the skills um, to be able to go into the workforce and that will in fact attract new kinds of companies uh, to come there. You know, I, I don't know if you'll you'll get Google to move to Miami, but you will certainly attract new entrepreneurial companies that are bringing together new types of solutions. And, um, you know, 
the, the key is for them is they're always just looking for, how, can I find local talent? Can I find local talent? And if I can find local talent, then I'm willing to, and if I, if I can get, obviously, good uh, policy making on and tax credits and things like that, um, and if there is incubation areas, places for me to grow my business and to develop my business with resources available to me from other areas, those are all very, very attractive things for the next uh, you know, new company, the next digital company to come in. And I, I do see Miami actually on a positive curve with this, so I, I, I do have lots of uh, hope for them. Great. Thanks for that. Um, there's some logistical questions about getting involved with IoT Talent Consortium coming in. Um, one is, are the membership packages on the website um, for individuals to be involved in active members, or is that geared towards companies? I think people are wondering how they get both their own companies involved and taking it to their workplaces to get them involved, but also individually how they can become involved. Yes, yeah, so um, so we have two ways to get involved. One is uh, as a, a corporate sponsorship, and um, uh, I think it's pretty clear on the website how that's mapped out and everything. So you can join as a corporation. As an individual, um, there's uh, really the best way to join is as a learner, as a community member. Um, and you can engage in conversation, you can contribute content, uh, you can you know, send us messages or give us um, ideas and direction uh, through the community um, site that we'll be putting up. Um, and uh, you know, as we're just in early, early stages of this, we are you know, focused on uh, trying to make progress with the biggest uh, companies in IT right out the gate. But of course, we want entrepreneurs and we want um, people to engage and to you know start to to help us get the word out about this because the more organizations that join, the more robust services we'll be able to provide, and uh, and the more ideas that will come our way on you know what's next, what's the next solution we need to solve for, and, and what do we need in terms of talent to get there. Great, um, and then a question came in: How will your learning at Cisco initiatives be tied to the IoT Talent Consortium? Yes, yeah, so um, Learning at Cisco, of course, is the organization that I um, that uh, is inside of Cisco. It's our educational arm for Cisco for certifications and and workforce education. And uh, of course, uh, we are a, a major sponsor of the IoT uh, Talent Consortium, as is GE and Rockwell and many other companies. Um, so um, we will be just like everybody else, aligning to what we all agree to on what these talent standards look like, and then providing certifications uh, towards that end. Um, so we'll see. You'll see Cisco certifications, Cisco education, and our partners that provide education all aligned towards this. Great. There's some questions coming from out of um, West Africa and Nigeria participants. And they're wondering if there's going to be scholarships or reduced fees available for um, people coming from the Global South. Well, so I think that, uh, you know, this, and this will be up to the individual participants that are offering the educational offerings, but I would certainly hope that we would have uh, things that we could drive through the IoT Talent um, Consortium that uh, do keep the cost down. You know, by definition of... Um, you know, how we want to drive this, we do want to keep some of the costs down for learning um, and make sure we have market-appropriate um, uh, costing for some of the education and certification services. So while the pricing of this will depend, uh, it'll be up to each, you know, organization that provides it within the, the consortium itself, um, we are going to try to drive, you know, this awareness of being globally relevant and globally appropriate um, and making sure that we don't um, have you know, uh, people putting in programs in here that um, don't meet the market needs. Yeah, great. Um, there's a question from Ahmed, um, and he's wondering, you know, the classical channel to prepare workforces at the university, he's wondering whether cur curriculums, current curriculums of universities align with the new roles that you listed on that slide. Um, how are you guys working? planning on working with universities to ch change and adjust curriculum. Yes, and that's a major part of our agenda. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about is part of the connection of the ecosystem is connect to connecting educators to this new standard. We Part of the reason why we 
put this talent consortium together is because we, we knew through, you know, designing the Internet industry and the Internet talent for the in Internet industry that it wasn't something that educators could do on their own. They needed help. They needed, um, they needed to know what the blueprints were and the standards were to, to be able to educate this. And they have their own pace and time, right? Educators can't move as quickly as private sector because they have certain standards that they're, they're required to live by themselves and certain processes and ways of getting uh, curricula signed off and approved within the universities and within the state and local government systems. So knowing that, um, you know, we said, well, we're going to create the standards, we're going to create the educational content, and we're going to invite educators to participate and, and go as fast as they can, as, as fast as what will be allowed uh, by their own system. But we're not going to obviously require people to get it through the educational systems because that would stall, you know, all of these efforts. So, so we're going to be an over-the-top as well as an integrated solution within the education systems. Great. Um, so there's some questions about certification. Um, you know, some of the folks on the webinar have taken the data center training certification, the CCNA certification. Um, so I think there's a lot of, of, of curiosity on the webinar, among the webinar attendees around what kind of other certifications are going to be coming down the pipeline. I know you have the slide with all these new roles um, coming out, and um, maybe you want to touch on that a little more, Jean. Yeah, let me go back. Hold on. Give me a moment here. And we'll talk about some of these. So <clears throat> some of the ones that have already been announced, there's there's one called the Industrial Network Engineer. This is um this is a, a new job role and essentially it's it's where the bridge in the manufacturing environment is between um IT and operations technology. So IT and OT. And this is a new certification we launched over the last um, six, six to nine months. This will be a core part. In fact, this is the first certification that was actually co-created uh, <clears throat> excuse me, by the IoT um, Talent Consortium. So this is something that we and Rockwell created together. And uh, this is something that we created as a standard for the industry at large for um, factory floor automation. So that's one example of a new thing that has been created. Of course, uh, cloud and cloud architect um, is another one. SDN and network programmability, because if you're if you're a networking person and you're in this space, then programmability is going to be the future of the world for you. And um, you know, learning how to um, uh, work in this new environment where where the network is now the the great IPI in the sky. <laughs> Uh, and being mm -hmm. able to use that as a way to bridge together all these different ecosystems and provide different classes of service over that. Those are going to be key things. Um, business uh, transformation practitioners is another area that we've developed. And, um, you know, this is a way to for people to, for IT people to think about themselves as consultants um, and in, um, you know, new ways to drive, um, new types of solutions of this type that we've been talking about through the seminar. Cybersecurity analyst, absolutely. This is uh, another one that we launched. This is also part of the IoT Talent Consortium. So this is a major one. In fact, the, probably the most important one that crosses all industries and all cities is uh, the protection of infrastructure. And so cybersecurity is going to be the number one job. This job alone requires a million new people in it over the next year to two years. So that's going to be a hot, hot job category. And, of course, data scientists. Those are going to be the, the really big ones. On top of that, we see probably the next thing that we'll move to will be smart lighting and smart lighting systems. Now, you'll also see us uh, with an innovation certification and program, uh, education program. This will be how do you think through innovation as an individual, as a corporation? How do you take it from ideation all the way through a business plan and get it to someone to get it funded? So we're going to, you know, um, provide education and certifications around that. And, of course, many others, but that's just a, a few examples. That's great. Thanks, Jean. That was really helpful. Um, well, we have uh, many, many questions we didn't get to today because of our huge audience. Um, but um, we will have the slides and recording available on our event page at cityminded.org. 
And um, we're going to have to wrap up the session today, but a reminder that a short survey will pop up once you close your browser, and we greatly appreciate your feedback. We hope to see everybody on our blog, cityminded.org, um, at our monthly webinars, which we hold every month, and our month on our annual summit at, in October in the San Francisco Bay Area. And more information on all our events is available at cityminded.org on our calendar page. Um, but, Jean, I just want to thank you for this fantastic talk and um, great new information around the IoT Talent Consortium. Um, you can follow Jean on Twitter at jdunsisco. Um, perhaps some of you might want to ask her questions individually. And um, thanks, everyone, for joining us, Jean. Thanks so much. Thank you. Great. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.